They, they all say that. Oh, don't worry about the. I'm not worried about the age. You know, that doesn't age doesn't matter at all. And they they'll convince you that it doesn't matter, it, and they'll keep on until you believe it that it doesn't matter. But it does. I understand that I'm 64 years old, but I never got past 20 in my heart. So you know, I, I still feel young at heart. I've got a lot to offer. You know, I come here looking for an honest relationship, uh, an honest, uh, an honest woman, someone who I could relate to, enjoy, and be with, and and maybe eventually uh, marry and have a, have a family. I enjoy being affectionate and showing affection, but I like that also in return. And that wasn't the case. Uh-huh. Can you cut a minute? Okay, sure, sure, sure. You get emotional. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want a tissue? Huh? Ah, you got, you got your own. Yeah, yeah, I got my own. It is draining, it is emotionally draining to me to go through all this and, and realize, you know, you've been duped out of a lot of money. When did it really sink in for you? What's really going on? Well, it really sunk in when I looked at my bank account and noticed, noticed that I was like $5,000 poorer than when I got there. Welcome to a special edition of Who Wants to Marry a Foreigner reality TV show edition. This is a special one because he's a 911 prospect client. I call a 911. We saved him from the clutches of the scammer ladies here in Kiev. So without further ado, let's meet Jeff. Hello, Joe. Good to meet you. And good to meet you too. And our star matchmaker, Tatiana. Hello. Jeff has been dating away uh, in Kiev for the past how long? Uh, since 13th of uh, March, so about five weeks. So let me cut to the chase and ask you, Jeff, how much would you say you're out of pocket right now um, you did some paper letter writing. The paper letter writing alone uh, I mean, was over $7,000, $8,000 by itself before I ever came to Kiev. How much, uh, you know, all in for your dating in Kiev here? Seven thousand, another $7,000. So we were talking close to fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. Ouch. Ouch, yes. Mm -hmm. Be all AFA ladies, all AFA translators. Can you just remember what were the main ages of the ladies that you were you were dating? Uh, the, the, the ages the ages of the ladies I, were, I was dating was like thirty to forty one was the oldest that I uh, dated, and most uh, thirty eight, uh, uh, thirty mid thirties, and uh, uh, was it in thirty four. Uh, was one of the ladies I'd been seeing that, that I was supposed to meet with today. Her, she was 34, and uh, so, yeah, so they were the, yeah, and I thought they were, were younger than uh, probably than I should have been dating, but especially when they're writing letters to you and making you think that they're interested in you, uh, you think that, well, okay, maybe the age is not, uh, maybe this is the unicorn for you that that you always hear about, but it's not. It's just, uh, you just get stuck is what ends up happening. And So our uh, promise to you, Jeff, is in this audition, you're going to share your past experience. Um, we will let you know with our professional matchmaker here what we, uh, you know, what we see from it outside in with Tatiana's 20 years of experience, my five years of experience. And then ultimately, uh, where we're going with this is that we want to go through your five parameters of zone of success and, and understand if we feel we can really help you be successful getting what you want. That's the key term, what you want um, with real ladies here yes, in Ukraine. Exactly. Let's maybe look at some of your photos of the ladies. See, maybe you can tell us some stories. Well, I have a, a really good juicy story for you. Uh, uh, the One of my translators and I seemed to have a real good connection, seemed like we clicked together. So we started dating and so she set up a date for us to go. It would be fun with uh, me and herself and her cousin to go to uh, 
uh, Russian Banya. This is Tatiana, who was supposed to be my translator and who I was supposed to be out on a date with, who brought her cousin with her, and we went to a spa, a Russian Banya, they, they call it. And this is a picture of, uh, of them together, a picture of Tatiana and I walking together. And, and that's, you know, about the most affection I felt uh, was that. This is a picture of Tatiana. And this was before we went and did the, the spa part of it, telling me about the tradition and everything of the, the tea and all that at that time. And that's her cousin. The spa was really nice. This is Tatiana again, it's supposed to be my date. The whole day, including all the things that we did, we, we went to the, the spa, we went and ate, and we spent about nine hours together that day. And then I paid for the taxi, and I paid for the banya, and then uh, she tells me that, oh, you've got to pay my fee my translator fee because the agency says that I have to charge you. And I said, well, what do you mean? And she says, well, we spent nine hours together, so you need to pay me uh, $20 an hour for nine hours. And I thought, what? And it was, it was crazy. And I was, it was embarrassing because I'm in front of these other people. American, that was uh, about $800 American is what that ended up being, which I was not expecting. So that that was really a uh, bad experience. Even though I had fun at the time, it wasn't, it apparently wasn't real. It was just make-believe, and it was just to get money out of me and, and waste my time and my money instead of actually being out on an actual date. So that that was my first experience. Yeah, that's a tough one because we, we go to the banya all the time and it's 500 grivna so, uh, for four hours in, in the banya, but depends on the banya. So your first experience wasn't a good one. Um, how do you feel uh, about that, Jeff? Do you? Well, uh, it, it, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but, you know, kind of makes me upset because here I am paying uh, almost $1,000 for three hours or for nine hours. You know, uh, that's a lot of money. I don't make that much money. I don't know m too many unless you're some kind of a, a profession of a doctor or a lawyer that would make that kind of money. And they, I don't think they make that much in nine hours a day. So that was a very bad experience. Let me just ask you a few questions uh, so our viewers can understand a little bit more about you. How uh, old are you? I'm 64. And how old was this date that you went to the Banya with? Uh, she was 30. How many ladies in total did you meet with uh, AFA on this trip? Uh, I, the exact number, I, I'm not sure, seven, eight uh, total probably. Uh, seven or eight, okay. Uh, and this one with the Banya, did you meet with her again? I met with her several times and each time it was the same thing. Well, the time that we were together, whether she came to my hotel room and we watched movies, a couple of movies together. That's four hours. So I have to pay her taxi fare and I have to pay her translation fee even though she wasn't translating. We were just sitting together and talking and and uh, drinking wine. And, and I'm, you know, uh, kind of slow, so I didn't put it together. You know, this doesn't make sense. This is, this is not, you know, this is not right. It's not, definitely not ethical. So it was very much taken advantage. Uh, I had, we probably had seven, seven or eight dates together. And so each time she's charging you 20 bucks an hour for a translator fee when she's your date yes. and there's no, no translator. And there's no, yes, yeah, she's my date and there's no one to translate for. How do you feel about that and, and how, how did it, you know, maybe share with us, how did it land on you, you know, date after date after date when you realize what's, what's happening? When did it really sink in for you what's really going on? Well, it really sunk in when I looked at my bank account and noticed, noticed that I was like $5,000 poorer than when I got there. 
And all of a sudden, before I know it, my, most of my money is gone. And uh, and I haven't got anything out of it. I've gone on some dates, but nothing, nothing that felt like it was, you know, any kind of connection whatsoever. And and so the more I think about it, the more I realize, you know, it was just it was a very expensive life experience that I didn't have to experience. That's for sure. Uh, give us an idea. What do you do for a living? Uh, and just anything you want to say about your lifestyle and what your intention is looking for a lady, you're looking for a wife, stuff like that. Well, I work for Apple Computer. I work from home. I'm a senior technical support advisor. I handle all of Apple's products. You know, I come here looking for an honest relationship, uh, an honest uh an honest woman, someone who I could relate to, enjoy, and be with, and and maybe eventually uh, marry and have a have a family or you know whatever. I understand that I'm 64 years old, but I never got past 20 in my heart. So you know I I still feel young at heart. I've got a lot to offer. I'm very intelligent, very well read. I read over a hundred books a year, and. Uh, I have a lot to lot to offer a, a good lady, and I enjoy being affectionate and showing affection. But I like that also in return, and that wasn't the case. On that point, can you describe to us? Was there any level of affection, holding hands, any any kisses, any uh, affection from any of these dates? No affection whatsoever, no facial expressions, nothing to give you any kind of a hint that they're interested in you. They only kiss on the cheek and maybe give you a hug, but this translator was like lots of uh, touching, lots of face, lots of expression that she was interested. We seemed to click and, and she was laughing and at my jokes, which was, you know, that was a, a feat in itself. But um, they weren't all that great. With Texas humor? Yeah. With Texas humor, <laughs> yes. And, you know, I thought, well, you know, this is a sign that we click, you know. So, so this is the translator that you're on the clock, 20 bucks an hour for, yes. for dating. Yes. You had the best connection with her. Yes, I had a good connection with her. Can I ask you, I always, uh, my advice to guys is always trust your gut. You know, we're at the end of the day, we understand with our gut, especially at our age, what does your gut tell you about all these experiences with all, dating all of these ladies? They, they, I never really got the the feeling that they were really interested in me like I, I was expecting. Uh, you know, I was expecting a little more than a kiss on the cheek, not, you know, anything sexual, but, you know, a kiss on the lips, uh, you know, holding hands and... Uh, uh, some some of them for of affection or, or expression from the woman that she's definitely interested in me as a person and not just sit there and have idle conversation. Let's maybe look at some of your photos of the ladies. I, I dated another girl, her name was Anna, and we had been writing for quite a while as well. She was supposed to be a doctor in Ukraine and we've been writing for a long time and then we we meet and i brought flowers to her uh, and she was very excited to get the flowers and everything we seemed to have a good time and the translator that I was with was also a, a tour guide and so she told a lot about the history of ukraine which was really interesting but we've had to seem to have a good time but you know she had to go and and i had to so uh I ended up paying for the the fee for the translator is like three hours, and then her taxi was like eight hundred grivna, and uh, seemed to have a good time. So I set up another date, and uh, we were talking, and then she said, "Well, instead of flowers, would you would you bring me some perfume?" Or, this is my favorite perfume. I said, what, uh, what is it? And she sends me a link to it. And so I click on this link, and this perfume is like uh, 
over 5,000 grivna. And I'm like thinking, there's no way I'm going to spend 5,000 grivna on some kind of perfume. And that I later looked up and found that I could get it for way, way a lot cheaper than that on by myself online if I wanted to. And but I'd already decided that you know this this is ridiculous. I'm not going to send a girl a bottle of perfume, especially since she asked me instead of bringing her flowers to bring her something else. That's just just to me is disrespectful. The shocking thing is. Uh, my wife and I just did a sting operation on the app called Femi Fatale, which is Fatal Woman in translation. By the way, that video, guys, is in the description below this video. You've got to check that out. What we discovered is that these ladies can get up to 70% cash back on these perfumes for coats, even an iPhone. How is that possible, guys? 70% 70, 70 off an iPhone. We went undercover. We dug deep. <laughs> My wife scammed me in one of the restaurants and we reveal how it is possible and why you guys need to know all of the cashback restaurants in Kiev and Odessa and be on, you know, high alert. If a lady is proposing to take you to one of these restaurants or buy you a gift or a perfume or fur coat, uh, you need to know if it's from one of these places, uh, you're definitely being scammed. And even regardless a, a good lady that is wife material here, like you said, Jeff, she's going to be happy with anything you buy, just simple flowers, she's going to be happy with that. A good girl in Ukraine is never going to propose or ask for any kind of gifts or money or anything like this. Just the act of this just tells you it's either a very low quality woman or more likely than not just a blatant scammer. Yeah, that's what I, I tend to come to the conclusion of after thinking about it a while and uh, it seems like um, every uh, everyone was was like that. Um, for instance, today I was supposed to have a date with a lady I'd been seeing for several times who spoke English. I didn't need a translator, and but every time I uh, uh, paid for her taxi ride and. Uh, Today, I, I just told her, well, I can't meet you because, you know, I can't pay for your taxi here. Uh, and so I don't want to, you know, to come because I can't pay for your ride here. And usually I pay her 600 grivna to, for her taxi ride, which I don't mind doing. But she, uh, she said, well, I'm willing to pay 500. If you'll pay 500, but I, I was and I was thinking. Joe and I were talking, and I'm thinking, well, I, I told her I got a hundred grievna I could give her. Well, that's 600 grievna right there. So, where's this other 500 grievna come from? I was very perplexed. Like, uh, okay, I'm not really good on math, but uh, seemed like 500 and 500 is a thousand grievna, not 600. So. Uh, you know, offering to give her a uh, to give her a hundred grievna, you know, and let her make the decision whether she wanted to come or not. You know, tells me that she knows I don't think she's really interested in me. She's interested in the money. And you know, Jeff, the the confusing thing about that, I can imagine, you know, putting myself in your shoes, is that we can't imagine that a girl could be playing us for cab fare. Exactly. You're, you're correct about that because I got to thinking about it. Of course, you don't know where any of them live, but they would have to live way, way out of the city to, to require that kind of cab fare. And, and you were saying off camera, most of you, your ladies, you're paying them between 600, uh, 600 grievna to 1,000 grievna for a cab fare both ways? Yes, from 600 to 1,000 grievna. And yeah, I can tell you that is an unusually high cab fare, unless you live outside of Kiev. But that, a tip here, guys, is uh, you can offer to put the lady in an Uber. Download the Uber app on your phone, and that way you have to actually enter the drop-off point, her address. So you'll know where she lives, and you will find that she won't agree to that. She'll say, oh, no, no, I, I, I always use this cab, cab company. Well, I assure you, everybody uses Uber or Ukulon or one of the app 
uh, cabs these days. So that's a huge red flag. So now I'm going to ask uh, my very experienced and gifted partner, our head matchmaker, Tatiana, what does she think about Jeff's dating experiences that he's just shared with us? So, yeah, what's your take on it, Tatiana? I think um, it was only play for him, only for play from lady. Uh, and the purpose was only to earn mo money, because because um, uh, I think uh, they have n they haven't uh, other moti uh, motivation to go to uh, with such um, big di uh, age difference for dating, and uh, I think that um, it's not good from agency to suppose uh, such playing for um, for clients. Who, who are searching and really would like to find the second half and soulmate. It's, it's a very bad play, um, but uh, for, <laughs> for some people it's a way to earn money only, only, I think. I completely agree with you. Um, to you and I, it's pretty you know, obvious. To a victim, which is what Jeff clearly is here, um, you know, and you critical viewers uh, that might be commenting below, uh, until you've walked a mile in boots like Jeff has just walked, it's very easy to be critical and say, how, how could you? Like, how, how is it you don't know any better? We're talking to a highly intelligent, I mean, 100 books a year, you know, uh, IT engineer that works for Apple, one of the most prestigious employers, right? So believe me, it can happen to anybody. I've seen oncologists, I've seen all kinds of specialists in the medical sphere, uh, entrepreneurs worth deca, deca millions be scammed, uh, and out of huge amounts, like up to $370,000, there was one guy that we talked to that was scammed. So it can happen to anyone. What was the biggest uh, red flag for you in hearing the story? What's the number one reason to you, it's clear that Jeff was being scammed by these ladies. I think it's a uh, too big age difference. Yes, uh, I'm sure that uh, it was uh, uh, absolute not uh, serious from ladies, and um, uh, and the motivation to go to you for dating was only money, only. And uh, the agencies uh, probably they know they could uh, could couldn't uh, invite a lady to dating without purpose and they uh, offer to this lady's purpose to earn money by you it's my opinion right and so let me guess when you're uh, talking to them by ppl paper letter back home you spend seven grand you know courting these ladies did you hear things like uh, age is just a number it's normal in ukraine i mean what did they tell you to justify that big age gap well, that's basically the main thing is, oh, age doesn't matter to me. You know, the Ukrainian men, they, they're they not any good. They don't pay us any attention. Uh, that's why we like older men. We, we like the men who are established, who are more mature, who uh, have a life together, their life together, and seem to have all their ducks in a row, so, speak, so to speak. But... Uh, they they all say that I oh, don't worry about the I'm not worried about the age you know that doesn't age doesn't matter at all and they they'll convince you that it doesn't matter it, and they'll keep on until you believe it that it doesn't matter but it does. So do you feel like you were almost brainwashed into believing that okay, yeah I intuitively know okay in my culture it's not acceptable but they're justifying it they're saying it's normal for them. So, I guess uh, I guess it's okay, something like that. Or how was it for you? Yeah, uh, basically, you're thinking that well, if it's if it's their culture, then it's okay. You know, in the United States, it, you, you wouldn't be da I wouldn't be dating a 30 year old lady. I'd, I'd be dating a lady, you know, somewhere in in the 50s, or you know, maybe late 40s at the most is where I would be dating, uh, but here you know, it wasn't quite that, that, that wasn't quite the case here. So yeah, it was kind of a, a, a rude awakening, let's say.
the whole idea is, listen, I call it the curse of man. Uh, all men are cursed, whatever uh, they want to tell you different. Uh, we're cursed. As we age, we <laughs> don't really believe what we see in the, in the mirror. Right, Jeff? We're always 20 at heart. Exactly. We never, we never get any older. And those girls that are young and hot, they, well, why not? You know, <laughs> I remember a day when I could, when I could, uh, when, not, not me, my wife's on the camera. I got to be really careful here, guys. <laughs> but not, I, I'm figuratively speaking, honey, in third person. The reality is, guys, we have to be realistic to be successful here. And the great news is opportunity is still magnitudes above what it would be back home. So that's the good news. It's kind of ironic when I, I one of the ladies I've been writing to for a long time, uh, when I did make the decision to come, then was telling me, oh no, it's not safe to come because of the COVID. It's too dangerous. It's, don't come. I don't, you know, it's not a good time to come. And I said, well, I've already made the decision. I've already booked the flight. I will be there. То есть я прям до последнего давлю. У меня вот куча мужчин при прилетали. Я до последнего тянул. Вот прям они приходили на встречу. Я то говорил там, что вот я сидела полчаса тебя ждала и ты не пришел на встречу или там возле оперного, например. Я говорю, я сидела возле фонтана. Он говорит, я, а я, я стоял возле входа я в оперный. Я говорю, ты что не знал, что это зона ожидания возле театра, это возле фонтана. Зачастую можно сказать, что я срочно уезжаю, заболела бабушка. В общем, банальные, типичные проблемы обычных жителей всего мира. Они знают, что это может случиться с кем угодно. У меня заболела бабушка. Он не может сказать, ты не врешь, потому что ты, у тебя заболела бабушка. Как? Ты мне не веришь. Ты вообще, мы с тобой так долго общаемся, ты мне не веришь. Это вообще, и все. Обида, он потом подарками извиняется. Подарками извиняется, да. Well, Jeff, that's the heartbreaking bad news, and I'm really sorry for what you've experienced um, here. But let's move on to the good news, shall we? Yes, let's do that. The big soapbox message I have is any man that's normal, I always say, you know, any Western guy that's normal can come here and be successful and be successful quickly. Like we have two clients in town this week, right? Uh, Peter met his lady on the first date and they're now together and making plans for the future it's miracles <laughs> do you believe in miracles <laughs> I, I would like to say that it's uh, how to say it's never stop to dream about something if you really want to do something you can want to receive something in your life everything is possible yeah, yeah. Just kind of dream. Yeah, it doesn't matter from which country we are it's just we find out each other yes yeah. <laughs> the good news is uh, that you can be successful here. In fact, let's take a look at that picture of Kelly and Natalia. Um, Tatiana just uh, broke out a picture that uh, I guess Natalia just sent this to you. Uh, so this was one of our first marriages uh, under the new umbrella of Match Guarantee. And uh, <laughs> she was saying, you know, they're quite similar. Uh, look at Kelly and Jeff, quite similar. And Kelly is, I remember he was 71, 72 at the time. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I remember Natalie was 48 at the time. They are happy together. It's the most important. Uh, they, are, they live uh, together five years. And um, uh, her sister would like to <laughs> find the man in our agency also. But uh, she is not sure uh, because she said that 
only one uh, people in family can be uh, so happy. Uh, that's why if Natalia found uh, man, I could not find. <laughs> yes, but uh, and sister, sister said me that uh, they are really, really happy, and she see it. Take a look, uh, please, there, Jeff. How does that look to you? Is that some? Is that? That seems more normal. Uh huh. More like a, a normal age difference. That, yeah. That yeah. And uh, so, let me be blunt with you. Is is this type of a picture something that would make you happy? It, no, not necessarily. Okay. Why is that? Well, it's not what I was expecting in my experience. That's not what I was expecting. I was expecting a, you know, uh, a different look, you know, from a, from a woman. Uh, and, you know, that, that would, would, would not interest me. Okay, well, it's going to get interesting, I think, guys. One thing I promise uh, you, Jeff, is that I won't blow smoke up your ass. <laughs>